All right, everybody, welcome to the show. Today we have got Jordan Briggs, and uh, this one's special because she is actually in our video for Keep Up With a Cowgirl, so I'm excited to finally get to talk to you. And first off, thank you for being a part of it. Not sure if you even knew Durango was doing it, but we're so happy that you were. You guys really uh, made this video just a whole nother level. Yeah, it was a really good surprise to see it on Facebook one day. <laughs> <laughs> Did Durango even really tell you all it was happening, or was it just a, oh, by the way, here you are? Yeah. Yeah, no, it turned out really neat. Uh, I liked all the footage that they used. And uh, yeah, it's exciting to be a part of a music video. I love it. I love it. We'll, we'll dive into some more of that later. I want to start off on your story. You know, the, the whole point of this is, you know, a lot of people know rodeo and know PBR and the bull riding, but they don't really dive into the life of the actual cowgirls that are a part of the rodeo and the barrel racers and all that stuff. So I'm going to start straight from the basics. You know, how did you get started? What was it like growing up? You know, was it your, was it a family thing or did you get this itch out of nowhere? Uh, no, it was a family thing. Um, I grew up in the back of a truck rodeoing with my mom. She is a four-time world champion. So I always, every day, wake up with big shoes to fill. And uh, so I grew up rodeoing and, uh, that's all I know how to do. So where did you grow up? Uh, Elbert, Colorado. My dad Colorado. was a cattle rancher and my mom was a school bus driver and a deputy sheriff until a special horse came into her life. And so they started rodeoing and quit their jobs. And my mom made the NFR eight years in a row, a uh, world champion four times, won the average We locking up a little bit. Ooh, we lost you there, right in the middle of it. I, you got to the part where you said that your mom, you know, won uh, or qualified four times. Right, I, I got lost there because it cut out. But I'm gonna let you finish what you're saying there because that was really interesting. But we we locked up on the signal. Yeah, she uh, she qualified for the NFR eight years in a row, and so that was eight years of rodeoing. You know, all the time living half the year up north and half the year in the south and. Uh, that's, that's kind of all I knew how to do was to grow up on the road. Well, let me dive in because a lot of the people, you know, they grew up on ranches and stuff that, you know, a lot of the interviews I've had so far, it's kind of been, they just jumped into this or they kind of were put into it, but I want to dive into your mom. That's even more interesting. So did she ride and do stuff before the special horse or was, I mean, what, let's go into that story. Cause obviously that had a big part of, of what made you. Yeah. Um, my mom grew up riding horses. They had, she actually grew up on half Arabians. Oh, wow. And, yeah. And did, you know, junior rodeos with her brother and sisters and stuff, but nothing like crazy serious, but she just always loved horses. And so through her real jobs, she always had horses, trained horses and had a couple special ones, but, you know, always ended up selling them or they definitely didn't make more than her job did. <laughs> until bozo came along and then she was making more money on the weekends than she was working all year oh, wow. uh he was he was an amazing fraternity horse and then went right into the rodeos as a young horse and you know he's probably one of the best girl horses that ever lived so did she really compete up until that horse or i mean what you know obviously y'all ranched and that kind of deal so i mean you, you were around the the livestock side of it but what, what sparked the let's go and truly go i mean obviously you said she started making money and winning but i mean what was the you got to make a decision to go man we're going to stop this and, and go full time with it i mean what was that deciding factor or what was that moment um you know i don't know i just think that she knew he was special and she she turned down a lot of money for him, you know, back in the day. This was in the, you know, the early 90s. Mm -hmm. And she just couldn't sell him. And so it just turned into, you know, a fairy tale. That's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, so let's dive into you a little bit more. So what age did you start truly getting into it and going professional? I know that eventually there was an age gap thing there where you couldn't go professional until 18, but I've you know, we, we've met a few of them that started way on where they could do it as a teenager. So where did you really get your start? Uh, so I rode all of my life and I was on the road with my mom. So I didn't start competing just super early in my life like kids do nowadays because I was just riding at the rodeos mm -hmm. um, and just being a kid. 
And I had a couple really good ponies that when we were home, I would go to the junior rodeos on. And I was 12 years old when I started running my mom's horse. Oh, wow. So I had a pretty early start on being able to ride one of the best horses in the business at 12. And so I definitely caught the bug there. Um, I got to run him through high school and and I, I also had a love for training horses. I started training horses when I was about 10 or 12 also. And I trained fraternity horses through high school, won the high school final, Shawnee, GOC Junior World, you know, like was competitive through high school. And I made the NFR in 2009, which I would have been like 20. Um, and... I ended up selling that horse after the NFR and just training fraternity colts for the last like 10 years, um, which fraternities are where you just compete on a certain age horse against other people on that age horse. And uh, I was very successful with that one, about a million dollars the last 10 years training fraternity horses. And then Rolo, which is the horse I won the world on last year and is in your video, um, he came into, he was a frater very successful fraternity horse. And then kind of the same thing with my mom. I just couldn't make myself sell him. And we decided to season him at the rodeos and the rest is history. That's awesome. So you, you said something early on that I've seen kind of a 50, 50 on with different interviews of some people want to train the horses. Some of them want them pretty much spoon fed to them. What is it for you? I mean, do you enjoy the training process? Do you feel like you get to connect with the horse more? I mean, what, what, what's your thought process there and why you train them yourself? Well, I think my, you know, my mom grew up poor and had to train her own horses <laughs> and that's, that's all, that's all I knew how to do. Uh, we didn't have money to go buy expensive horses. Uh, we were lucky to be able to keep expensive horses. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, that's just, that's what I grew up learning how to do I've always been huge into sport into horsemanship and learning from colt breakers and everybody since I was a young kid and so that's I don't even know how to train how to ride a horse that I didn't train to be honest well do, do you actually break them too or just do you wait till they're broken and work on the training part uh, my husband uh, we've been together for 12 years and so we we do everything ourselves we raise raise them and he breaks them and then he ropes on them and I train them for barrel racing. See, I'll take them from day one. I love it. I love it. You don't get that a lot these days. Well, let's yes. talk into that then. So y'all actually obviously have a family business. How'd y'all meet? Did y'all meet at rodeo? Has he always been a part of it or where did that come from? Yeah, we met, uh, through college rodeo through friends of friends and, uh, got married young at 21 and, been together ever since and we also uh when we're not training horses we build places from scratch oh wow. so we are on our fourth we're on our fourth uh horse place to build from scratch and right now we live in toller texas oh you're not far from me then I, so i'm in justin near fort worth but we got family over in granbury so we're over that way all the time oops do we lock up again I'll let it go. There we go. I don't know why the signal keeps cutting out on us. I'm sorry. Toller doesn't have the best phone service. That's uh, all right. We were, we were looking over at a spot not far from there to buy some land the other day. And I, I when I saw one bar the whole time, I was like, we got to have some good Wi-Fi for our jobs. <laughs> we do that. But uh, that's great. That's great. Um, well, let me dive in a little bit more then. So uh, as far as your year goes, do you spend a lot more days on the road? Or, you know, some people just love running, gunning, running, gunning. Some people are very strategic on the days that they choose to go out and, and actually, you know, ride and compete. You know, what, what's your schedule like these days? So in the rodeos, you have to qualify for those big rodeos the year before. And so last year I did have to kind of rodeo a lot because I didn't get into those big rodeos. But this year I was able to be more, you know, pick and choose where I went. And I was lucky enough to win Houston. And so that gave That's me a, a huge jump. Yeah. yeah it gave me a huge jump in the standings. And so I only went to 30 rodeos this year. Um, I would say probably all together, I was gone maybe four months and it worked out amazing. I wish I could plan it like that every year <laughs> because 
we have a four-year-old daughter also and she she goes with me her and my husband go with me when I go like far away Uh but when I'm just traveling around Texas I normally just kind of go by myself because I can kind of you know just be gone for like a week at Houston or San Antonio and then come home I mean, you know, let's talk about that a little bit, the travel and stuff. And, you know, like for, for me, with a musician, everybody just thinks you've all got a tour bus and you roll around in it. And that's not the truth. you got to work your way in. So what's what's y'all's travel like? What, what do y'all roll in? And, and, you know, do y'all have a crew? Is it just you guys? How do y'all get the day going? Oh, it's just us or just me. Um, I take two or three horses with me, and they're the main priority. I have a, a one-ton pickup truck with a 33-foot living quarters trailer. And I, you know, I can park and turn on a generator and be fine for wherever I need to be. So the main priority is always finding uh, place, places for my horses to stay. Got that. Got that. Um, okay. So let's go into life at home. You know, obviously y'all train and, and work on that, but w- what's a day in the prep like, you know, I always relate these questions right here to like us as musicians. Cause everybody thinks once again, you just roll up, step on a stage and you play, but there's so much behind the scenes or so much of the travel. There's so much, even the setup of the show day. What is at home? Like how much does this consume you and how much do y'all get to, to do other stuff? What, what, what's, what's it like? Well, we have 20 head of horses at home that we ride between the hus- my husband and I. And uh, we clean our own stalls and feed our own horses and do everything ourselves. And uh, it's a pretty busy day. We're in the process of building a house at the moment also. Um, And so we just are really busy just training the next horses for our future. I love it. I love it. All right. Then let's go into a day when you do travel. You know, I've talked to to some of the athletes that they're all about just pace get their last minute rolling and go some people are very strategic and want to slow and, and kind of you know mm-hmm. work their way into it what, what's your uh what's your strategy well if I start packing too soon I end up packing too much Same. And so I try to kind of wait till the last minute to pack so that I only take the necessities instead of packing nonstop. but I'm sure when we start packing for Vegas it'll be loaded down because staying in Las Vegas for two weeks is a long process but um no just most of my horse stuff stays packed all the time in the trailer kind of ready to go and so I just have to kind of pack my own stuff and uh we do it so often that really it's it's pretty easy to do yeah yeah well so when you get there what what's your kind of get ready in the moment deal. Are you a music person? Do you like riding around and warming up for a while? Do you, do you take your time? Let, let's, let's get that moment right as you're, you're getting ready to go out and ride. Yeah. I kind of like to be my myself with my horse and just kind of, you know, get in the moment with him and think about our last best runs. And I like, you know, quiet and be able to take my time and not be in any hurry. I like it. I like it. So here's been something that's been interesting for me is hearing different versions of some people talk about as soon as they hit the arena, you know, it's, it's almost like blacking out. You don't hear anything. You don't see anything. It's you and the horse. And then some people are completely energized by the crowd in the moment. What, which one are you? Um, I, I hear a little bit, I guess, like when I'm going down the alleyway, I probably hear a little bit. I feel like I, I use the announcer is almost my like pep up, you know, cause they kind of like, they announce your name and they kind of talk you up. And so I feel like that kind of builds me up going up the alleyway and gives me confidence. And then once I take off, I'm, it's pretty blackout silence and just complete focus. Straight to the point. I love it. I love it. So do you feel like there's any battles being a female athlete in the rodeo world that maybe the that the guys have an advantage on that you have something that you struggle or what's it like within the female community out there? Um, I, I don't think that we have any struggles since we have our own event. Um, you know, I'm sure that the girls that want to team rope and do that kind of stuff, I'm sure they have their own struggles, but, uh, since we kind of have our own event and we're the women's professional rodeo association, I feel that we have equal opportunities and, you know, we're just kind of a different kind of woman. We're cowgirls and we don't, we don't take crap off of anybody. So 
<laughs> we're that pretty- was I've asked that question every time and I've been waiting on somebody to give that like we're cowgirl. That was the first time I'm going to give you a virtual high five on that one. I, I love it. it. So, you know, I, I've kind of got this response, you know, where it's been a little bit 50 50 as well. Do you feel like it's a big community and everybody cheers each other on or is everybody going after a competitive edge? What, what's your view on it? Well, to be honest, uh, you know, we're running against a clock. Like it's just us. We, we cross the timer we do our job, we cross the timer again. So honestly, we're just competing with ourselves and the clock. And other than that, you just have to kind of ignore all the other stuff. And, you know, my mom always tells me that it's just Rolo and I out there and we just have to make our own run every single time. And it's all up to who's more prepared, who wants it more. And, you know, just let the cards lay as they fall. I love it. All business. I love it. I love it. Well, I'm going to dive back in a little bit more now into the the video and and music and Durango and all that good stuff. So we hadn't had that opportunity really with anybody. You're the, you're the first one I've interviewed in the video. So uh, how did your relationship with Durango start? Uh, So my husband, he's been wearing Durango boots for a few years now and loves them. And he was friends with somebody that works there. And he had been telling me, you need to get these boots. You need to get these boots. But I didn't really know where to find them. And they reached out to me before the NFR last year and they sent me some. And uh, anyways, I ended up really liking them and they're great. They're a great company. They've been a great support system for me the past year. I was really appreciative of them for reaching out to me, you know, before the NFR, before I was a world champion. And I was glad to, to, you know, make them look smart for picking me to wear their boots. (laughs) I love it. I love it. Yeah, it's kind of the same boat. I uh, I, I was backstage. Uh, I'd finished my set, and I think I was watching Chris Young or something. And my now rep there, Aaron, uh, was there, yeah. and I think I was wearing Luke Casey's or something at the time. I remember she looked down at my boots. I was like, Ooh, are those Luke Casey's? I was like, yeah. She's like, you need to be in Durango's. I was like, well, give me some. Ta-da. Yeah. Here, here we are all these years later. <laughs> it's cool how that story comes around. I, I want to dive in a little bit more, too, because you – you know, I've talked to some people that have competed in the NFR, but for you to be an actual winner of the whole shindig, I mean, talk about that. And like, you know, what do you, you got to have an extra gear. There's something different. You know, that's, that's talking Tom Brady winning Super Bowls kind of deal for the people that don't necessarily know rodeo. Like, I mean, what does it take to get to that level and get to that next part? I mean, I, I love that you kind of caught on to it earlier when you or caught on, you know what I'm trying to say, where you said that about, you know, it's just you and the horse and a clock, but I mean, what, what separates you from, from the others to be able to do that and do it so many times? I mean, it's not like you just want it once you've won it several. Well, um, my horse is my Tom Brady. <laughs> um, he, he, he catches on, he knows his job. He's very consistent and he's amazing. <laughs> And so my job is to just feed off of his confidence and stay out of his way um, and just take care of him the best I can so he lasts for a long time. And so that's that's the most important thing is a, an amazing horse. You know, I think all the team ropers and the calf ropers, they are their athletes and they are the main part of their job. I mean, their horses do a lot too, but they have the talent running through their fingertips us on the other hand we're pretty at mercy um, of our horsepower and so I do have amazing horsepower underneath me and then I think just years of training fraternity horses and being competitive and watching my mom um, you know just gives me a strong mental game to believe in my horse and be able to not take that pressure to heart I got you there so I can dive in a little deeper with you as well, because y'all actually breed the horses. I'm not sure that we've talked to anybody that does that. I mean, at what point and what are you looking for when you know when you breed that horse? You know, when do you know that it's going to be one that you can actually think about trying to compete with? And, and what are you looking for to know that? Well, so we have our breeding down to a science. I mean, we're like being Michael Jordan and Serena Williams together. <laughs> create this amazing phenomenal athlete and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't but most of the time we kind of have it down to a science where they're they're going to be able to do that job very well um and you know we 
we start messing with them as babies, a little bit as your lens. It's a long process. You know, we don't get on their backs till they're two. And you kind of figure out what kind of athlete they are and if they're smart or easy to deal with. Um, normally, the ones that are like in their two and three year old year, the harder they are to deal with, the better athletes. And stubborn. That, yes, the better they're going to be. Rolo was pretty stubborn as a two year old, but he was extremely athletic. And I don't know, we just we just wait it out kind of and see how it goes. And normally by their four year old year, you know a lot about them. So what age are you typically ready to take them and try to compete? I mean, do you, I'm sure you would test them out at kind of some smaller, you know, rodeos and that kind of deal. But what's your, your process there? So the fraternities, you can pick which age you want to run them at. That's either four-year-olds or five-year-olds. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up saving Rolo as a five-year-old because I was pregnant his four-year-old year. And so my husband roped on him that year and just kind of made him a really nice all-around horse. And he won like $150,000 his five-year-old year. So we're five years in and... He's making a living and knowing, you know, making a living for us and knowing that he's an extreme athlete. Um, but the rodeos are a different deal. Some horses handle that environment and some horses do not. Uh, yeah. Luckily, Rolo took on to the rodeos really quickly. Um, probably by, you know, eight rodeos in, he was being very competitive and, you know, placing and competing with some of the best horses in the business. So I knew pretty quick that Rolo definitely wanted to be a rodeo horse. That's awesome. So you started competing him at five. How long realistically at what age do you think you can be able to keep running with him? Well, he's, he's a very solid made horse and sound. And luckily he's so good at his job. I don't have to run him very often. And so I hope to keep taking care of him that way and only going to 30 or 40 rodeos a year. Um, so I would hope I would, really hope that he would last till he was 12 or 15 mm -hmm. that would be a miracle <laughs> love it well let's get away from rodeo i mean we've talked a little bit about home life as far as the work side of it but you know what does jordan and her family do when y'all are not working not rodeo and is it just 24 7 that's all you think about or do y'all get away and, and have some some you time um we we're pretty much 24 7 on working um my little girl rides with us and you know brings up the steers with my husband and that's kind of an off day fun day for us but we go out to eat and go shopping every once in a while and go to the movies um when we have when it's raining and we can't work those are our little vacation days <laughs> oh that's i know that feeling it's people all the time y'all get interviewed and like what are your hobbies i'm like there is none. We work 24 seven. So yeah. I know that feeling. Being down at a restaurant is our hobby. Yeah. Yeah. Having somebody actually else do the work for five seconds. It's nice. Yes. Well, obviously I'm a musician, so I got to ask music wise, what, what's your, uh, you know, is there anything you like to listen to before you ride going down the road, just when you're chilling, what, what, what's your go-to mixes? Oh, we're definitely like hardcore Texas country, red dirt country. Uh, we listen to that on Pandora all the time. And my my daughter loves Miranda Lambert. So we know every Miranda Lambert song by heart. Pure Texan. I love it. I love it. Well, I think we've ran through every question I had. Is there anything that you'd like to add or anything you'd want to send out to the people watching? Oh, I just want to thank you for involving us in a music video. It was I really love it. I love the the, the feeling behind the cowgirls you know, way of life. And, uh, I just appreciate you involving us. I appreciate y'all, man. This song's been very good to me and I'm, I'm very thankful that y'all could be a part of it. And, uh, hopefully I get to catch y'all out here at some point being, uh, both sponsored by Durango. There's no reason for us not to end up at an event together. So I, uh, if I don't see you before, good luck at the NFR. And, uh, I don't know, we we're, we're trying to get out there this year. I'm not sure if it's going to happen or not just yet, but if it is, I'll make sure we try to come see you. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. It was nice meeting you. Hey, likewise. Y'all have fun. You too. Bye. All righty.